cut. <laughs> no, that's oh. start. Sorry. That's yeah. and <laughs> slate. Do we all clap so yes. that Jason slate. can put all the audio together? Oh, oh right click synchronize. <laughs> <laughs> okay, slate. <clears throat> Is that too loud? It's okay. Perfect. <laughs> Lane Jane and I'm Design Muse and this is High Octane Hustle. What Another are we going to talk about? Yeah, what are we going to talk about? Well, we have a fantastic guest today. I'm so uh, you might know him from the off-road world and journalism in general, motor trend, truck trend, all kinds of stuff. So, we'll get talking about him shortly and who introduce is, him. Who is it? Oh, oh, are we supposed to talk about it yet? Sean P. Holman. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. P. But we'll, I don't know. Well, I anyway, you have to do the his middle name. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. Sean P. Holman. Yes, I love it. Yes. I love it. But uh, before I've, that, I've known him probably almost that long, probably almost twenty years now, through Holy. different uh, off-road magazines that he's been in and stuff. But oh I'm excited gosh. today to I share too. with everyone uh, everything he's been doing. So. I am too. Yeah. So let's <laughs> let's recap about what we've been doing. What have we been up to? Well, let, you go first. Well, tell me, tell me. You know what? It was the holidays, and okay. I spent a lot of time in the desert and uh, doing some off-road stuff, heading out and adventuring in Ridgecrest and the Pinnacles, and met some killer people. I mean, you were off-roading, of course. Yes, of course. <laughs> you're so. I, I loved it when you you're like, oh, I'm so proud of you. I'm so happy for you. <laughs> It makes sense to me. Yeah, but I met this guy. His name is Jeff McCarthy, and I'm hoping to have him on the show sometime. Oh, great. Tell me about him. Um, he, it was about two years, uh, built a thing. An oh, I saw that. Is that it was gorgeous. sick or it was what? Gorgeous. You guys, this yeah. thing was out of control. Yeah, super, it was, it was, super yeah. cool. You had posted that, of, yeah. of course, yeah. So that was super cool. I've got to look Love at a it. couple other things here. There we go. Things, um, literally, things. or things? Oh, my gosh. So many good Not things. Not just Volkswagen things, but other things? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, but in our shop, too. We've got a full Missoula build right now, which I figured you'd be excited about, too, because it's all off about off-road stuff. Yeah, stuff. I wanted to pitch. I course. don't know. Could it be because Sean's here that I wanted to go with the whole <laughs> off-road feeling? And that's funny because, you know, I guess the things that I've been doing, we did... Um, Cruising PCH. Oh, I was so, so bummed. So that, they yeah. do the toy drive one, and it is always epic. That one, yeah. I mean, that whole parking lot, I mean, there has to be a thousand cars, if not more. I mean, Billions of dollars insane. of gorgeousness. Insane. Yeah. insane. Yeah. But it was cool because it's the best of both worlds because there were some awesome off-road vehicles too. Yeah. Uh, Rob from like RJ Fab, he had oh, his yeah. Ranger there. Like there were some really rad rides. I saw Shelby Hall there too. Oh, so um, cool. Of course I saw Sean and everyone else yes. here from Autotopia yeah. and things like that. So it's always great. It's a great event to go out yeah. to and just see everyone. It's the holidays, you know? Yes. So it's really fun to, yeah. to get to see our car family I'm during sorry, that time. I'm sorry I missed it. I was bummed uh, out. I am too. I'm I know. Sorry I missed it. I know. Sometimes things I take away. And Go ahead. <laughs> you first. You first. Because I've been doing all the talking. I, that's what I love to do. You know, I, I mean, I've known him for a while, so it's cool. He is a uh, automotive journalist, I would say, but more into the off-road space, you know, and, and that's kind of been his niche over the years. But a veteran of, of over 20 years um, in the industry working for uh, Motor Trend and Truck Trend and uh, just recently in the last year, some new things happening and stuff. Oh, but there's also the podcast, too. It's a number one podcast. Unreal. That he does with um, Lightning. So that's Jay Tiles. Uh, he does that one, and it is the Truck Show podcast. So, yep, that's been really cool. And now he has all these great new uh, ventures going on. He has Use for advent Adventures. <laughs> Use for Adventures is his own company. He has OV working with OVR as an editor at large. Um, that is Outdoor Vehicle Recreation Magazine. Uh, I'll show it in a minute. Sorry. We haven't introduced him yet. There's I so know. many things. There's, There's so, so many much things. stuff. But we want to introduce Sean P. Holman. Sean! Hey, it's good to uh, be here with you lovely ladies today. Oh I know we've been talking about <laughs> it forever. 
Well, you know, I, it is your podcast, and I wanted to make sure that uh, I gave you your proper uh, your bye proper bye. news. Yeah, bye 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 I, bye. I got you. I got right. you here. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, we try. Yeah. So I I, uh, I got a lot going on. Yeah. I think yeah. That, definitely. Um, five minutes into just my introduction, and uh, I was getting bored. So. <laughs> No, no, it's great. I mean, I'm, you know, part of it, and I'll let you, I, I know, I want you to put up this sure. beautiful magazine, because I've always been a print girl, you know? I mean, you have to put something. So this is Outdoor Vehicle Recreation, Yes. and you're part of that. So yep. but let's start out with t- talking about that a little bit. Yeah, okay, so uh, like you said, I worked at uh, Motor Trend, uh, which had 100 names during the 20 years I was there. So Prime Media, Source Interlink, uh, 10, every time we got bought, the name changed. But it's the same company <laughs> and that- And I know them all, yes. Yeah, yeah right. Um, uh, we used to say, it was, to remember, it was Pepsi 10. It was uh, Peterson, EMAP, Source Interlake. I you know, that one, 10. Too, yeah. I mean, just it was our funny way of remembering all the companies. But yeah. Um, yeah, I was there for 20 years. My last, I don't know, six or seven, I ran all the content for the truck and off-road groups. Of course, that's everything from truck and diesel power, truck trend, four-wheeler, Peterson's four-wheel and off-road, JP, all of those. And at the end of last year, the company made the decision that they wanted to get out of the print business yep. in, in the truck space, which... To me, it was sort of mind blowing because yeah. like that's the one space that's blowing up right now. Yeah. So I'm like, I, I look forward to things like yeah. that. Yeah, seeing yeah, that. I still oh like my a, gosh, I still. I still like it. Yeah, so I had yeah. to kind of like switch gears and figure out. Okay, I've been at the same place for 20 years. Um, I kind of have a lot of capabilities. What do I do now? So I had to figure out how how to uh, hustle and grind on my own. I wasn't about ready to jump in with another uh, mm-hmm. company. I've had a few uh, corporations call me and say, "Hey, we'd love you for this position." I'm like, "Nope." Yeah. You know, and yeah, but of course they would. Well, my right? wife told me, she said, when are you going to get a real job? And I said, well, give me a year. <laughs> and it, if, if I can't pay the bills after a year, those real jobs will still exist. And yeah. so um, I, 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 I'm barely making it happen. So uh, she's fine with it. And uh, you know, I think she's she's proud of me for uh, kind of what we did. But um, OVR Magazine is great. So again, uh, big uh, every two months, so six times a year, big format, beautiful package size, yeah. oh, high quality paper, paper so, oh all of it. Oh my gosh. So yeah. this yeah, is something you're going to gorgeous. actually keep and yeah. have on yeah. your coffee table. I mean, table. look at the photography yeah. in there. It's phenomenal. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's just a beautiful magazine. It is. It so is. there's five partners. We're independently owned by ourselves. I'm one of the partners on it. And um, it's the same crew. The majority of us launched some specials at Motor Trend, like Recoil, uh, yeah. Geek, some of those. Um, one of uh, the editor, Jerry uh, Sai, he was at Tread for a while. Mark Hahn was at Recoil for 14 yeah, years. All awesome magazines, yeah. too. Go- so same we, thing, gorgeous, like you want to touch yeah, them yeah. Like, and look through yeah. every pa- so, picture. So yeah. we all got together and said, hey, listen, you know, they're vacating the space. We think we can do it better. Yeah. They had been planning this for a couple of years. They kept calling me and said, hey, you want to be a part of it? You want to be a part of it? I'm like, nah, you know, the devil you, you know. And, uh, I like having my, you know, benefits and cushy paycheck sure. and all that kind of stuff. And I've still been there a while. Yeah. And I still loved I still loved yeah. my team and I wasn't yeah. ready to abandon that yet. And then when they forced my hand and said, Hey, sure. it's you know, we're getting rid of this and and uh, you're going with it. Um they OVR, the partners called me and said, You ready now? I said, Yep. <laughs> so <laughs> right? so now we're a year it's in. Time. Yeah, we're available nationwide at uh, Books a Million and Barnes and Noble. You can uh, subscribe, OVRMag.com. But um, we're really, t- to me, this is our love letter back to the off roading industry. This is, if yeah. you've ever been kind of hosed by print, like, for example, maybe you signed up for a year in January and by Feb- or by December, the magazine was gone or they gave you another magazine you didn't subscribe to because they killed right? it. Like we're committed. There, there's yeah. five partners. Um, we've written hand handwritten letters to people to our early subscribers. We want people to know we're part of the community. We're about relationships. We're about that trust with our audience. And we're yeah. about bringing you along for the ride with us. Th- this isn't a- about oh well. You know we've been doing this for so long. We know everything. And so what we say is gospel. No, this is about adventure. It's about lifestyle. Yeah. Basically, we say vehicle based recreation. So it's anything on wheels. It could be a mountain bike. Could be a motorcycle, dual yeah. sport, could be a CUV like a Subaru or RAV4, could be Jeeps, Land Rovers, Tacomas, yeah. Land Cruisers, whatever. It doesn't matter. If you're using your vehicle to go have an adventure, we want to talk about that storytelling. And so to me, OVR is really special. It's it's something that's really unique in the marketplace. I think we slot it in just at the right spot and uh, really excited about the growth this past year. We just hit our year anniversary and our seventh issue just uh, just is hitting right now on, on newsstands. So, Which is this one right here. We, uh, this 
this one's number six. Okay. And um, this was the one that uh, basically wrapped up our year. And then, okay. uh, yeah, you'll be able to find number seven uh, locally, probably by the time this uh, this shows out. So cool. have that. And then uh, at Motor Trend started the Truck Show podcast with my friend uh, Jay Tillis, who uh, is lightning from K-Rock. So if you're a Southern California person, you remember the Kevin and Bean show. Yeah. Uh, we've been friends for years. It's totally. And and that's it's like, it. No, it, yeah. it's funny. I, I because, cried when Kevin and Bean left. Oh, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and those were like, it was like a staple to it me, was. like waking up and, and knowing Jay's voice, all the, everyone's voice. I once voice. didn't like, pursue years. a job in San Diego because when I went yeah. down to the job interview, I couldn't get K-Rock in the morning anymore. Like that's, that's <laughs> serious. I swear to God. No, I did. True. Yeah. My son's name was Carson because of Carson <laughs> Daly yeah. when he worked, yeah. when he was on K-Rock. Well, people don't realize Kennedy, stuff, like, Carson, I mean, there's, right. you know, Jimmy Kimmel, they all yeah. started, yeah. you oh, know, yeah. at K-Rock and on the uh, Kevin and Bean morning show. Right. Exactly. So we started that six years ago when Motor Trend said, hey, we know Princeton decline. We're getting into videos. We're getting into social. We're getting into digital. Do you have how many? You said five. Uh, we're going on our sixth year now. Six. Yeah. 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 Okay. So um, we just, you know, I, I put a business plan together and said, you know, podcasting is this great space yeah. that is sort of has high engagement like print does, but it's not as expensive as video to produce and you can put it out on your own schedule. And at the time, there was lots of really specific podcasts like Ronnie at C10 Talk or, you know, the guys over at the Diesel uh, Podcast and a bunch of those. But there wasn't a broad category like trucks and off-road. And so our tagline is lifted, lowered, and everything in between. And so we really cover everything, um, run the gamut, whether, I mean, we've had everything from a guy who's made, you know, um, $100 making a widget in his garage to like <laughs> the chief engineer of the Ford F-150 to somebody who has an event, somebody who has an idea, somebody who's an entrepreneur, somebody. Whatever it doesn't matter if you're interesting if you're in the space we want to hear from you and so we we have this really general interest podcast that we drop every Monday this year we're going to two a week so Mondays and Thursdays awesome. to uh, oh, to grow the show yeah so yeah. it's it's uh, if you're familiar with K Rock. Uh, Omar, who does all the sound, yes. and yeah. he does a lot of our jingles and he songs. He would do our, um, yeah, That's he would DJ so our, our events too, oh, yeah. our truck uh, truck show events. Yeah, yeah. So oh, he, he Omar's yeah. awesome. Omar's awesome. So yeah. if you miss like that morning show vibe, and but you really oh, want dude. the subject, <laughs> show, like that's what we do. Yeah, we I like going back to it. Yeah, I, love yeah, yeah. It. Okay. I love it. I love it. I think you should give him a high five now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's funny because we had a lot of people. Hey, who, I'll let you. I like that you're like. I already gave him one. You give him one now. There's plenty to go around, ladies. <laughs> Baja Forge, signature vehicle builds and off-road products built to forge your own path. Baja Forge was basically made because we loved off-roading. We loved the open roads. If you're looking for off-road products to help you get out on the terrain, visit BajaForge.com. Follow us on Instagram at Baja Forge for our latest builds. Ladies and gentlemen, it is an absolute honor to officially announce the giveaway of this 2018 GMC Denali behind me and this $10,000 in cash. Head on over to the site, envisionsupplyco.com, for your chance to win. Every $1 you spend will get you one entry into winning this 700 horsepower truck and this cash. Your chance is now. Good luck. No, so it's really cool because we've had a lot of listeners over the years who've said, "Hey, I used to listen to a morning show coming yeah. to work. I listen to the podcast now." And so yeah, we've got a no, lot of great fans. My husband does and, all the time, literally, yeah. religiously. Yeah. We've had a lot of people, you know, um, who their spouse listens to and they're like, "I don't yeah. care about trucks, but I really yeah. like listening to the show." Yeah, yeah. Or, I, I listen to it too, kids. but Jason, yeah. like, literally, religiously, yeah. is always yeah. There's a story that I, I tell from time to time that was really touching because when you get into doing this kind of stuff, you're just doing it kind of because you like it. Sure, it's fun. You're like, oh, maybe I can make a go of it. And you don't realize that you're like, right. yeah, you're, you don't realize you're, you're like touching people's lives. Yeah. But we had a guy who uh, reached out to us and he said, hey, my dad and I had this old 67 to 72 C10 project and we had a falling out and we haven't talked in, you know, it was a five or 10 years or something like that. Mm -hmm. And he said, I started listening to the show and I started getting kind of excited to do the project to call my dad up. And he Aww. and I started working on weekends together, listening to the show, Aww. working on the C10. And he said, my dad just died this year. And if it weren't for the podcast, we yeah. never would have reconnected Aww. and I wouldn't have had that time with them. And that's I mean, it just so it still good. gives me chills to, yeah, to say that because so great. you don't think about that kind of stuff, sure, right? You sure. don't think about, oh, I'm impacting somebody's life or anything like that. You're, you're awesome. just like, I'm just having a good time. I don't, I, you don't realize downstream that it maybe was just, it was something that, that somebody needed. And we've got all these great listeners. And, and I think we forget that this is connection. It, oh, like, even though it's just right here, it is yeah. reaching everyone else too. And that's yeah. all that everyone wants, you know? And all and, the cool stuff you get to do. We had a, a guy send us a picture and it was of him in the sale of an Ohio class submarine, uh, basically 
with it going into port, and he said, uh, my truck's bigger than your truck. <laughs> and the Ohio That's class cute. is something like 36 feet in diameter and like 350 <laughs> feet long or something. It's like, cool. you know, it's like, you know, I don't remember. It's like the Empire State Building sure. turned on to end, right? <laughs> right? So he actually invited me out to Kings Bay, Georgia, to the sub base right. there. And he goes, you know, we'd love to give you a tour. And I had sent them a box of magazines and swag yeah. and stickers. Oh, I love that. And so he sent me some pictures back for the crew. And he says, when they retire that submarine, they will wonder how those stickers got in places that they got, right? <laughs> oh, so I love it. So got, got the, you know, the clearance and everything. And uh, go to Kings Bay, Georgia, meet a bunch of people. And they're like, hey, you know, uh, the Navy was great. They're like, welcome. Thank you for, you know, boosting morale for our yeah. guys. Because if you wow. think about it, like the submarine guys, they're not going to ports of call like the average yeah. ship yeah, is. Right. They, they're they underwater waiting for the, much. you know, for somebody yes. to push the button and yeah. then to get a, you know, get, yeah. the, get the message, right? Yeah. And so what they bring on them on tour, which can last months and months, yeah. is what they have. So a lot of times they download all the podcasts they can and magazines, and then those are the things that they have while they're underwater or underway. And uh, so I got there, and just as one of the uh, guided missile subs was coming up and docking, and, and so my friend uh, is like, well, what do you think of that? And I'm like, that's amazing. He goes, well, turn around. And I turn around, and it's the dry dock, and the USS Tennessee is out of dry dock. And it's out of the water. Wow. And we walked through the whole sub, except for the classified areas, but yeah. walked through the whole sub. And then I got to walk under it. So I like to tell people, like, I walked underneath a uh, so, U.S. Yeah. ballistic missile right? submarine. Like, that's pretty cool, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, like, but those are the, the, the types of, sure. you know, experiences, the podcast and connections, to your point. Yeah. You know, that have afforded, you know, us to be able to do these really neat things with really neat people. And right. Just, and you don't even realize it sometimes. You, you just, right? You're just doing it. And, and, I, yeah. And, and you don't realize how much people appreciate the relationship you build by coming to them weekly and, and having that. And I've met people out with my family and they're like, hey, is, are you Sean P. Holman from the, the podcast? Sean P. Holman. Super weird. Sean P. Holman. It's super weird. It, so yeah. there, there was a, another writer named Sean Holman when I started. So I put mm. my middle initial. So everything is Sean okay. P. So that's, my, so that's why. You're always going to be Sean uh, P. to me. So a lot of people call me, they, they call me Sean P. They call, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's yeah, all sorts of funny stuff. Um, yeah, so, you know, OVR, the Truck Show Podcast, and then because I, I didn't think I was busy enough, I also started my You're company. You're an underachiever. Right, uh, Use for I Adventure, like that. and then that's uh, consulting, adventure, freelance, and marketing. So any companies in the truck and off-road space that need help with a, a product plan, a company plan, um, go-to-market strategy on a product, social, they need help writing press releases or copy yeah, for the website. Because what you've done all of these yeah, years. So I've got yeah. a few clients there yeah. where I help kind of write content and fill in from their editorial team. Because a lot of times it's sales guys, but they're not marketing guys, and they need help kind of constructing these things. And so those three businesses have, have kept me busy. I'm a year into all three of them now, and I'm, I'm still standing. So I guess I, guess I did okay. <laughs> That's they say if you last, what, five, you're in good shape? So I only got four more to go. <laughs> right, right. The first is always the hardest, and, and yeah. that's what everyone kind of doesn't realize, I yeah. guess. It's, it's the, am I going to make it? You I know? think the second for me is going to be the hardest. And the only reason I say that is because I had six months of severance from Motor Trend. Oh, okay. right. Got and so it. like, this is the first full year where I'm like, I'm on my own, on my own. <laughs> and if it weren't for my supportive wife and her really well-paying job with yes. benefits, yes. I probably wouldn't have been able to experiment and yeah. go and, and, and see what I could do on my own. But that's why you have um, an awesome partner like yeah. that. You know? and, and so. so I, I you know, definitely got to got to hand it to her because uh, she's been supportive uh, of this, these ventures. Denise, and, shout out to Denise. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. So it's, it's been fun. Um, I'm still trying to figure things out and, you know, I always tell people now they're like, should I start my own business? And I'm like, yes, totally start your own business. You should totally do that. You know, right. It's, it's a thing crazy. that it's not for everyone. You have yeah. to understand. It's just like what you said, like this year is going to be harder. You don't have a separate, like yeah. it's up to you. Yeah. It's up to you to make it. Yeah. There's no, nothing to fall well, they back don't tell on. You, all... you don't get consistency of anything. It's, totally. And yeah. they don't tell you like, oh, well, you need a CPA and you need a bookkeeper because <laughs> yeah. when you go and do quick other work, things. you're like, okay, so I don't have my, I don't have credit for my business yet. So I have to use my personal credit card to fund my business until I, my business right. has enough, you know, going on where it can get its own credit card. Well, you don't just enter that in QuickBooks as like, like a yeah. debit. No, you enter yes. it in a journal yes. as a loan Entry. from yourself and a payment. Oh my yes. God. So I did like four months and my, my uh, CPA is like, uh, you got to redo all that. And I'm like, well, I'm sorry, <laughs> no. what? And then just no, the, you know, the tax someone. implications. Yeah. And then it's like, well, as a business owner, I have to pay myself a salary because I have a, I have an S corp. So you have to, you have to yeah. pay right. a salary, right? Yeah. Right. What they don't tell you is you pay yourself and you're like, oh, I'll pay myself this much, you know, I'll pay period. And they're like, okay, well, this much comes out because you're the, you're the owner. So that goes to mm -hmm. corporate taxes. Yeah. And then this part comes out for your personal taxes for payroll. And you're going, 
One dollar. Wait a second. <laughs> How did uh, what? What? So wait, like, why do people do this again? <laughs> yeah. And I'm thinking, wow, I, I felt pretty good. I looked at like what I made last year. I'm like, yeah. And then I look at what I actually made last year, yeah. and I went, oh. Yeah. <laughs> so it's there's you're right. Things, it's not for everybody. Taxes and stuff. You it's know, but it, but it's just a matter of understanding. So it, it's you know, it's like working on a vehicle or something yeah. like that. It, it's like if you want to understand all the aspects of it, then yet you, you just have to do each one. Yeah. Right. But, you know, in, in order to build a vehicle, there's a lot of different aspects to doing it. Sometimes someone just is good at one thing. Yeah. So you have and to find some, either someone else yeah. that's good at Sometimes something else. Sometimes it's a lot easier or... <laughs> to pay somebody who knows than to learn because now you're fighting opportunity costs yes. and bandwidth, right? Yes. So yes. everything that you do over here is taking away from making money or doing something over here. So yep. it's like, what am I spending on this task? Oh, yep. they're going to charge me 200 bucks to, a month to do this. I looked at my time. I should yes. have paid myself $4,500 because of all the time, and yep. I still don't, don't know what I'm doing. Correct. So that $200 suddenly became a good deal, yep. and I'm just going to roll with that. Right? Yeah, yeah. So it's really understanding all of that, and, yeah. and, and it's the management and strategy of, of what works for yeah. that. So Yeah, it's definitely constant. that idea of uh, <laughs> learning delegation as yeah. an entrepreneur. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so That's I mean, the, the, the hustle is real. I know. <laughs> oh, this yeah. is my well, octane hustle, yeah, exactly, but, right, but, right. but the, the hustle is real. In, and, and, and we do it for a reason. And we do for, it because for we love our love it. of trucks, yeah. yes, yeah. And, or vehicles right. or whatever that is. So, well, or, or chasing success in your own terms, I think, yeah, you know, because yeah. it could be any industry. Um, and I just think that, you know, a lot of people don't have the safety net, so they're afraid to do it. And I know a lot of people that are cut. I've always wanted to be an entrepreneur. I always thought it would be really cool. I didn't have the safety net or I didn't, you know, I was too comfortable. And sometimes you get too cozy and you don't push mm -hmm. yourself anymore. And I felt like this year was all about being uncomfortable and yeah. kind you of facing well realities. With it. Yeah. yeah, it was like the universe sort of, you know, I had kind of started thinking about when I was going to leave Motor Trend. 20 years was, felt pretty good to me. You know, things were changing over there. A lot of corporate stuff that, that I wasn't super thrilled that I had to deal with. Yeah. And before I could make my decision, I kind of felt like the universe said, all right, birdie, time to fly. Push right, me out of the nest, right? right. And then, then you have to make you're, it work. You're there, and we, you just need this little <laughs> nudge. Yeah. <laughs> and so I, I'm, I'm thankful for all the support from everybody this year and, and all my clients and, and our listeners and just everybody who helped, you know, believes enough in me to spend time, whether it's listening to the podcast or, you know, think of, thinks of me for a job or something like that. Like, all that stuff matters. And, and it's been nice to have friends in the industry who are supportive of, of that. Yeah. And, and it is, I mean, you, you've put the time and effort in over the years. I yeah. mean, you know, pretty much all the OEs and yeah. stuff like that, you know, you've been, uh, you know, as a journalist, you're going out there on the trails, yep. you're, you're, you're reviewing pretty much every vehicle that's out there. So, you know, it, I mean, your network's already grown. Yeah. So, so you've put all of that time and effort in and now, yes, now, now you're kind of, yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I mean, I, I've been, I don't know. I think they've been like four wheeling on four continents. I've raced in the yeah. Baja 1000 and done a bunch of desert racing and, um, I want to hear more about the Baja 1000, <laughs> your, your take on it uh, in time. And, and then we'll yeah. talk about the Ranger Splash. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Are we allowed to talk about how that story came about? Or is that NDA? Yeah. Is that done? Like, can we oh, talk? Oh, yeah, we, we can. Okay. I, asked, I actually okay. um, sent an email to them one time and yeah. was like, can we talk? Yeah. Yes, we can. But yeah. I'm mad that we could never, we never yeah. really talked about well, it. Well, and they were supposed to do a documentary on it. I know. And they, they didn't. So. What we're talking about. It's a new line of business. So, so in, in, Jason. Uh, so as a, as a journalist, sometimes you have what I like to refer to as like a fox and hound relationship. And, the, and if you remember the old Disney story, the fox and the hound. Yes. And the reason for that is journalists and manufacturing marketing departments are very curated experience. There's always a certain amount of timeline when things get released, who we talk to, how we roll something out. Very rarely... But sometimes it happens, they trust you enough to bring you in under the tent and say, we have this product coming out, we need your input to make sure that we don't get it wrong. Yeah. And so I've, I've been lucky enough in That's my lovely. career yeah. on probably seven, eight, nine manufacturers where I've been able to go in and give that input and I can go to a vehicle and go, oh, that right there, that yeah. was, I did that. And Teresa and I were asked by Ford to uh, help uh, for about five years. Yeah, it was the, before, prior to release. Yeah, yeah to the uh, development of the Bronco. Yeah. And so I had owned a few Rangers in my day and, and was a Ford <laughs> guy uh, when I started the magazine stuff. And um, so I had shared photos of my uh, Ranger Splash, Flash. which was the step side. And so I got, the Ford guys made fun of me. I'm like, you can't. 
they make fun of me for buying your product that you guys made? And there are a few people that have been at Ford for like 25, 30 years. They're like, oh, yeah, I remember when that came out. Yeah, or I, totally. I, did, I did something on that. Yeah. But um, yeah, it was, it was interesting. Um, they did a uh, industry panel. There's probably 10 people handpicked. Yeah. And so we all had some some influence. And I don't, I don't know that the Bronco came out exactly where I had hoped it would be, but sure. it's still pretty good. I mean, yeah, I, I think, yeah. I think we really pushed them into yeah. a direction that, that cus, uh, consumers, customers are benefiting from today. I think so. But I don't think it's where necessarily all the way where it could have been based on kind of things sure. we really wanted to see. Yeah. Yeah. Is that fair? It, it is. Okay. It is because, because they still, they respected yeah. what, what we said. And yeah. so some of the things were definitely yeah. taken into consideration, yes. but, but they still were yeah. like, where we pushed on some things, they were just yeah. like, nah. Yeah. And we're like, or, or the okay. cost, or the but cost like, wasn't all acceptable. of us are telling you that, yeah, you know, yeah. and, they and they're like, well, well, we have to share to, parts, you know, but pieces, it's or yeah. it, they yeah. still have yeah. to, you know, this platform exists. We have to use these parts. Yeah. We can't change this or yep. that. There's certain things that were yep. locked in, but I mean, we were so early that we literally saw a styrofoam, of a of a Jeep. Well, yeah, I mean, it didn't, it didn't even look like what the Bronco looks like now, right? Exactly. Yeah, I mean, we sat in we, a styrofoam <laughs> cockpit with like Velcro and stick on things. We're like, yeah. where should the gauges be? What should it look like? And, yeah. You know, we had VR things yeah. and we talked to the, de the designers. And I remember the one version they showed us and I felt it like really lacked emotion. And it was all these new designers that had mm. done it completely in a virtual setting in a computer. Yeah. And none of them had been around for even the last full size Bronco. Yeah. Or, and they were younger. And they were too. very young. They were very yeah, young. They're they, in their twenties. It, the, it was the newer generation and, of designers. And I felt like it I, was. I, I felt like you I get what you guys are doing, but you lost the soul in the process. Yeah. You have to experience it. You have to go go yeah. drive one, go take one off road, and then come back. And I think ultimately what they did was you know, a little bit compromised, but I think it came out pretty good considering yeah. like there were a lot of different directions. And I was really surprised when we saw the Bronco Sport early and we all kind of went, oh, oh man, oh. I know, right? It's like a mini Ford freestyle. You're going, guys, I don't know. Yeah, what, we, we, we were so, no, yeah. they like, <laughs> we're going to launch this yeah, one yeah. first. And we were like, huh? no, you're not. Yeah, yeah. It was like <laughs> dead silence. Like, yeah, we're like, I'm well, sorry, you, what? no, 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 because now <laughs> like, people will think that's the Bronco, know, which is what happened. Right. And so, and what they kind of wanted, yeah. it was this, yeah. So anyway, but that thing is, ended up being a really incredible sales success. Oh my God, and the sport is amazing. Yeah. It's really good off-road. It goes everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It really does. Totally agree. But when, I remember when we saw it, we were like, it's like mm -hmm. record scratch, right? We're in this like totally. Bronco theme, like, oh yeah, do this. Oh, the doors come off. Woo, all right, it's awesome. And then it's like, Full on like whiplash. I mean, You're going, I mean, oh, what, what's well, think that? about this. You have the you have a Bronco Sport that's come out. You have like a Mustang too that's come out before. You have all yeah. these vehicles that yeah. haven't been, and then all of a sudden they're like, this is the one that's rolling out, and we're like, no. Yeah, yeah. Know. yeah. What are you doing? We're already pissed <laughs> yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. what are you doing to us? Like, yeah. but, why are we part of this? Why are we? Yeah, here? Why are we here? <laughs> like, no, it was a fun experience, and it, it's nice when a manufacturer calls you up and, and brings you in early because yeah. you can help make a better vehicle for the enthusiast. And yeah. I, you know, I, I take. To me, there's a lot of responsibility and yeah, of the course. fact that they respect your opinion and you can help make it better for the aftermarket and for what all of us like to do after the vehicle comes home right. with us yeah. is right. pretty cool. Mods. Yeah. And that was a big part of that even too, because, you know, they asked me as like a restyler and stuff like, oh, are you, are you mad that we're going to make these, uh, parts modular and stuff. And I was yeah. like, actually, no, you're yeah. putting the engineering into all this because yeah. we would have to do that. Yeah. So it's making it easier for me to bolt a yeah. part on. Totally. So yeah. no, that's great. Yeah. So, so it was really cool because they did ask us for that input yeah. and stuff. And, so and they, they did respect and they all built it. They, they knew Wrangler had a huge accessory market. Yeah. So they built Bronco with accessories in mind and yeah, and it was great. So yeah. fun, fun, fun experience. Yeah. And no, I, I think it's just, you have, you've been in all different parts. How did you more get into the off-road side of it? Because yeah. you've been, obviously been in trucks, like that was mm -hmm. part of it, but where did that off-road part, and, and she even mentioned the Baja 1000, I guess. Yeah, yeah. We, 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 we went yeah. straight to That's Ranger okay. Splash. It, That's well. all right. You talked about the Ranger Splash. Yeah. That brought, like, really well, well, it's, traumatic memories. Definitely putting that video, that photo up. Yes. Yeah. So, that so was an oddball. The, well, I'll say the Ranger Raptor is coming out now and it's like, I uh, built yeah. a Ranger Raptor yeah. in four wheeler magazine back in like 2002 or something with a, okay, um, you're a little late. <laughs> yeah, they're a little late, right? I, I my, mine was the FX4, which first year, so it was FX4, after they're called FX4 level twos. And uh, I had a, um, I think it was like four inches wider per side, long travel kit and, and Bill Stein's on it. And um, 
you know, all that kind of stuff. It, it had 14 inches of travel front, 17 inches of travel in the rear, supercharger from Explorer Express. Um, you know, it was manual. The thing was awesome. A Torsen's right. front and rear. In fact, my friend at Torsen gave me the ones out of Rob McCachran's race truck. Ooh. I mean, that's cool right After there. the season. So that truck actually had his his custom Torsons in it. Rad. So that thing in like second gear, full throttle, woo, around the corner oh, ball fun. was really fun. Fun. Yeah. I'd like to ride shotgun on that. Yeah. And I don't own it anymore. Or I'd, I'd yeah. prefer to drive it, but Unfortunately, you know, I'm I've, reaching. I got a great picture of uh, Shane uh, Kassad and I from Bill Stein. look like we're like nose, you know, yeah. like lawn darting that thing. Oh. I thought for sure the airbags were going and we were completely... It was and it fine. just went cool. Yeah, it was totally fine. We uh, Right after I built that thing, we were chasing in Baja to go see the race, and we were heading down to San Felipe, and we were on the highway that crosses the peninsula, mm -hmm. and there's a bunch of whooped-out sections. And we built the bed cage so my Coleman cooler could fit right in the bed cage. Yeah. And down. Nice planning. Well, I couldn't find cans before we left the border, so I had a bunch of glass Corona oh. bottles in there. Oh. And so I was with uh, Steve on Segger, and he We're was already there. like... <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so Shane was in the Bill Stein Ranger, and I was in... Um, I was in my Ranger with Steve on Segrin, who's at Bill Stein now, who was, worked with the magazines for 20 plus years. And we're hitting the whoops. And I get on the radio, I go, hey, Shane, like, why are you driving so slow? He's like, where are you? I'm like, look to your right. And we're paralleling him at highway speeds in this thing. <laughs> and then Steve says, like, hey, don't you have glass bottles in the back of that? And I'm like, oh, oh no beer for food. anyone. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, long story short, um, <laughs> we got there. Not one bottle was broken. Ooh. Oh, yeah, it was totally, yeah. We you ended had to up tap the top though. Yeah, but then we went bit. to to um, I, I can't remember if it was it's the Bill Steins. Po Portacito. <laughs> it was. It was so smooth. Exactly. Um, but anyway, we we did a photo shoot as the tide was coming in, almost lost in the ocean, like and two hours later. So I've done that. <laughs> yeah. that, that was when that my truck when my truck was on the cover of trucking. Uh -huh. That happened yeah, yeah. too. That, that, that's fast. That, when I was in Cabo. Yeah. No, my oh. Raptor. Oh. In Cabo. Yeah, you're like, oh, oh, it's sinking fast. Oh, oh it's yeah. to the hub. It's time to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've done that with, with four-wheeler. So, um, yeah, I, going back, um, I just, I liked off-roading because I was a camp counselor uh, for uh, the Boy Scouts, and there's a camp in northern San Diego County called Lost Valley. And Lost Valley had a 14-mile dirt road, and I all the cool guys who were older all had Jeeps or pickup trucks. Yeah. My one friend Jason had a power, like an old power wagon with turbine wheels yeah. on it. And so I had a Honda Accord and, and before <laughs> I could drive, okay. I would ride with them. Okay, so yeah. I'd be in the back of a CJ7 or a YJ with a top off or I'd be in the power wagon. I'm like, oh, this is really cool. And then I had friends <laughs> who had off-road trucks. So then I, my first 4x4 was the, was the splash. And so I would make okay. my dad go out and, and, and go off-roading with me. And I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. Uh, we would just go, put in four-wheel yeah. drive and go, I don't know, go down this road. Well, yeah. um, as if I'm not busy enough. I'm also on the board of directors for the Mojave Desert Heritage and Cultural yeah, Association. Yeah, that's really cool. Good. Yeah. And so they're the ones, Dennis K. Spear, who's the founder, was the one who, who rediscovered the Mojave Road and put together the Mojave Road Guide. Yeah. So in my youth, when I had that that truck, I was I think I told my dad, I'm like, I want to go do this. And the beauty of the Mojave Road Guide was that I love history. History is one of my favorite things. Yeah. It was the first time in my life that I realized that I could combine off-roading and history. I wasn't just going to a ghost town to go kick some timbers on the ground mm -hmm. or to walk around. I was going to this town site where this book told me all about it and I could do more research on it. And I was off-roading to these great places. So that's kind of how I got the bug of off-roading and eventually overlanding because I love to go to desolate, far out places where, you know, tougher, human, yeah, tougher yeah. humans than me were out there living. And I'm like, I'm there for a night going, this is cool. <laughs> all right, air conditioning, I'm gonna fire I'm up my heated seats yeah. and steering wheel in the morning, right? right? Um, so that's how that started. And then uh, I was actually in law enforcement for a while, went through police academy, ended up not pursuing that. And a friend of mine had called and said, hey, are you interested? I need a writer to freelance some stories for me. And so I was working Bo uh, graveyards at the time for Boeing doing fire and security. And actually, I was there uh, during the um, the Columbia disaster in September 11th. Mm. So it was a crazy time to be at like a, yeah. a high security uh, government um, plant. But um, Anyway, I would work graveyards and then I would go write stories during the day. And I started amassing a little bit of a freelance deal. I went out on the Magellan Rally in uh, Arizona. Actually, I think it was with Yokohama, who you guys had uh, nice. as a guest not, awesome. not too long ago. I like that. And I met Allison Shout Harwood. Shout out to Yokohama. Shout out to Yokohama. <laughs> and I met Allison oh, yeah. Harwood. Okay. And so yeah, yeah. her and I hit it off. Okay. And we ended up, we've been friends for a really long time, but she knew I was interested in getting the off-road books. And yeah, because she, she, was she at Trucking specifically? She was or was Truckin's she was SUV, at Trucking's SUV, I think. Okay, yeah. and, tr that's what it was. And uh, Truckin', yeah, Trucking's SUV and something else. And then, okay. and I think she was doing, maybe not yet at that time, mm -hmm. but eventually ended up on Truck Trend. But 
she said, there's a job opening, but it's at Truck and Magazine, but it'll get your foot in the door. I'm like, I'll take it. So started out at Truck and Magazine, um, had, had the opportunity to move to Four Wheeler, which was in the 6420 building in Wilshire in West LA. That was a huge move from being down Orange County. And then I just really cut my teeth and that four wheeler afforded me all these amazing opportunities, wheel yeah. all over the, the country, yeah. Africa, uh, race in the Baja 1000. So going back to the Baja story, um, I was really tight with Hummer uh, and did a bunch of stuff with them through four wheeler. Some of their vehicles won our four wheeler of the year back in the day. And so I was invited out by Rod Hall and his sons, Chad and Josh through Hummer to That's come fun. experience the race truck. And so I rode with Josh Hall my first time in the big yellow SpongeBob, like H2, which had like, I think it weighed 9,000 pounds, had like seven and a half inches of travel. Yeah. I mean, it was just like, right? <laughs> so my very first trip with him, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm like, oh, this is rad. I'm going off-road racing. And they, mm -hmm. I had a suit and I had my helmet, the Parker pumper. And he's like, we've got these brand new Fox shocks that have these heat sensors on it. So could you keep an eye on the monitor, he goes, I don't, oh. I know the race course, so it's not like Baja where I need the navigation, but I need you to keep your eye on temps. Well, the Hummer's cow was really high, and the engineer from GM who co-drove with him a lot was Thad Stump. Well, the seat was really low because Thad was like six foot six or something like that. So I sit in it, and I'm like looking out of <laughs> it like, like this. <laughs> and so I lost the horizon, and I'm looking at the thing, oh, you're overheating and stuff, and then I'm like, uh -oh. It's already oh, oh, really no, right? <laughs> and so I started getting sick because somebody oh, asked man. me in the morning, and you guys know Bob Bauer, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Bob said, "Don't do anything different than you normally do. Don't trick your body racing. Like that's that's oh. like a thank you, Bob. Best advice ever. Well, one of the guys said, "Well, did you have breakfast?" I go, "No, I don't usually eat breakfast. No, you need to eat something. Hands me a Cliff Bar. Well, that was yeah. the worst uh, thing ever. Yeah. So I started getting sick in my helmet, and I'm like, "Oh no, this is horrible. We're in the middle of a race, and, and like Josh, oh, that's you know, horrible. You, when you're oh, racing, gosh. you're going. Uh, this was at the terrible 250. Oh, you're no. like get 40 feet of center line, so you can go off road to pass people and stuff. Josh is in the boulders. He's like, oh, right. I'm this thing, and I'm like, Bleh. and you know, he doesn't believe in nerfing people. Okay. So I had train horns. So the co-driver had the train horn up here. He's like, hit it, Bleh. and you'd see the car like swerve because yeah, they didn't yeah. know that he was behind yeah. him. So that was all fun until it wasn't. Mm -hmm. And it's coming up, and I'm like, no, it's coming up, and I'm like, I'm like, I can, I, I can, I can manhandle this. I'm just gonna swallow it. And I'm good. Oh right? my god! So about like, I don't know, four or five of those in, I just couldn't do it anymore. You had to ask about the Baja story. Huh? So I, I lifted, I lifted my helmet, didn't get it high enough. Oh. and destroyed my helmet and everything under all over the dash, whatever. Oh. So Josh is driving. He it's looks amazing. Up. Cliff bars are like oh, this yeah, big, yeah. but they, they expand so much more. And they're disgusting, and I will never have one ever again oh my to this day. I would never have this one was, either. This was like almost four years ago. So Josh looks over at me. He hits the radio. He goes, uh, you know, whatever his number was, we're coming into pit. And I get on the radio. I'm like, no, we're not. And then the intercom, he's like, dude, you're sick. I'm like, I'm good now. He goes, are you sure? I'm like, dude, we're in first place. I'm not going to yeah. quit her. Yeah. We ended up finishing, and, uh, and then Sam Coffrin, I think, got in, or, or maybe it was Bob Bauer after me, uh, and finished the race, and, he, and Josh won and got first place in, nice. in the class. Wow. So awesome. when Baja came around that year, uh, Hummer had invited a whole bunch of media, like 20 media, down to um, Baja to race with Rod. And all these people's names were on the doors of the cars and stuff and all that, and my name wasn't on there, and I'm like... Oh no, right. like they don't think it's I can handle it. Up. I, 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 I yacked and I'm out. That's it. Yeah. I, was, I was like, yeah, like what and done. You, <laughs> you, and I'm, and I'm like, I'm super like, right. I'm super disappointed because right. I'm thinking I totally have to up. I always want to do this. <laughs> the thing that you find out later, beyond the catheters, that's a whole other story for you racers. Oh right? yeah. Uh, oh, but yeah. the thing you learned out, right, everybody barfs and it's not a big deal. Yeah. And it gets cleaned up Inferior, and whatever. Yeah. So I'm at that time I'm thinking, well, this sucks because I don't I don't get to race or I'm not on the car. Or they forgot about me or I whatever. And Josh is giving kind of the team meeting the first night, and all the three race trucks are there, and he's in front of the yellow one, and they've got the H1 that Chad was driving, and they got the H3 that Rod was driving. Uh, by the way, Rod Hall, one of the most amazing human beings, like That's just an awesome. incredible guy to, yeah. to know. We just had Shelby on, so yeah. oh yeah, it's, re it's really she, cool. She, she moved she to Huntington Beach, so I see her driving around all yeah. the time now. Yeah. I'm like, hey, did cool. you move by me? I see you all the time. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Josh is her dad. Yeah. Or yeah, so Josh, yeah, is, yeah, 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 Josh, yeah, Josh is her dad, and so I was really tight with Josh. But it all started so at Baja. He's giving the team meeting, and he says at the end of it, he says, "If you notice, all of your names are on the side of my dad's truck." and one of your names is missing. And I'm thinking, yeah, I know who that is, it's me, right? And I'm just sitting there and I'm like, okay, I can't wait to see what happens. And he said, um, this person uh, proved to me that he belongs in my truck. 
his name's on my door and he's one of the toughest co-drivers I've ever been with. And that's Aww. how I got into Josh's truck. And we won Baja that year too. Because you didn't get out of the truck. No, you get, get out of the truck. Park. Park. Yeah. You don't you quit. Get okay. Don't ever you quit. Get that story got better. All right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and that was the so year, rad. that was like 2006, I think. And I raced with him for, four, I think, three or four years until like the cartel cool. got really crazy down there. Like yeah. the year the helicopter clipped the, the, the lines and then down. the yeah. cartel like shot up the morgue in Ensenada and pulled the body out. And I'm like, I'm, like, I'm done in Mexico for a while. Um, but it was really funny. I remember a couple things on that. If you ever raced in Baja and there's like these rhythms, noise completely disappears from you. Wearing a, a suits like pajamas and it's super cozy sometimes, right? You don't have a windshield. And I remember I was like, we're going like 70. And it's just the rhythm. And I'm trying to fall asleep. <laughs> so Josh Goodness. moves into this. Like, we're in the cactus gardens. And you he can tell goes in there, here. Yeah. And like cactus bulbs are flying through and hitting me. And I'm like waking <laughs> up. He's like, don't fall asleep. But on that particular trip, we're, there's like a dead snake. And then there's a dead cat. And then a dog. And then a, a cow. And then a horse. And I'm like, are you seeing this? He's like, yeah, they keep getting bigger. I'm like, they're like brontosaurus oh, around the, the corner. And the cows are, are scary. Oh, yeah. It's scary oh, because yeah. there's nowhere to go. Yeah. You have a road that's going straight, and like you said, it's cactus on both sides. Yeah. You can't really you, go you anywhere. Just, yeah, and you hit something like that, it's big. We, yeah. we, uh, we passed Travis's car after he crashed. Yeah. It was upside down. I'll never forget. His tire was on fire. The the It was upside down, so it was, the I guess, the driver's rear. Oh. And it was like slowly burning. Mm. And Josh and I just both looked, but we didn't say anything until after the race. I'm like, dude, did you see Mr. He's like, yeah, I saw it. You know? was like, we weren't going to say anything because we were in like race mode. Yeah. And that thing was four-wheel drive, which is pretty novel even in, in stock class. And so we got up to this, this big, like really rutted out hill. So all these buggies had gone up and then the rear engine ones kind of lawn darted backwards. So there was all these like, they're almost like, you know. Um, plants. Yeah, plants or obelisks or something. Like, yeah. Just like peppering this mountain and all these people stuck. It's an because, art installation. Yeah, right? I'm like, what is this? So you get out and, and, you know, Josh is following me through and we're, there's probably, you know, 15 cars on the bottom and five or six all over the hill. And so we get back into the base of the hill and he's like, all right, put in four wheel drive. So we had front and rear lockers. We had four wheel drive low. We passed like 25 cars on this hill. It's like, yeah. Yep. And it's just, it's we'll just, just all you're like, them. Oh, see you guys. Sweet. Is that why the armed forces left? <laughs> No, oh, you were in something different. <laughs> you weren't in the harm. I Never was mind. like, what? No, the, the, the Baja <laughs> experience, they talk about being magical. Edit that out. <laughs> they talk about the Baja experience being magical. It is. It's, it's just an amazing thing. I wish yeah. everybody could do it at, at least once. Um, the camaraderie, the teamwork, everything goes into it. But that's, anyway, that's the Baja part of it. And the off-roading part is I got into the magazine, and then I just had a, fun, a lot of fun doing it. And so I never left until I did. Perfect. The end. I, that was done. <laughs> Oh, uh, hoist a Dr. Pepper like up to the. Uh... <laughs> that was the perfect ending to that right there. That's exactly. Awesome. Well, it, it literally is almost over. Turning, so, was so that say, was a great. Thank you for turning that story around. That, for yeah. <laughs> and so I was like, we didn't want to hear that, but yes, we did. Of course, you did. I actually, yeah. It's yeah, all about actually, storytelling. I actually yeah, haven't heard that story yet, so that yeah. was great. Oh, so fantastic! We could share it with everyone. So that right. was even better. I um, so I mean, a couple things. I mean, that that's it. Where time's up, but. <laughs> <laughs> it's job. over. Wait, wait I minute. know. Oh, that's because you have to get to my podcast later tonight. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. There's that too. You have to get to your own also. I do have to get to my own podcast and be <laughs> yeah. there for when you get there. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, but just a couple things. I mean, obviously, we'd love for you to share how people can reach you, but we do have a question. Yes. My question this time. I'm not saying a thing. <laughs> <laughs> You're just teasing. I would like to know what your dream vehicle is, why, oh. and where would you drive it? I mean, that's that's hard. I totally get it. That's, yeah, that's it, our point of asking you. Yeah, it. I, I, <laughs> but should he have like a couple to choose from if he, oh, if always. he feels so Yeah, always. I mean, I, I have. I've, we won't limit you. I've driven a lot of things. <laughs> I've driven, you know, hundreds of different vehicles, probably more than that, you know, different models and things like that. Maybe a thousand if you consider all the different years and stuff. Sure. I mean, I drive for a living, so I'm really particular. Like, I started, I'm like, oh, hardcore Ford guy. Then I got into this, and I drove everything. I'm like, oh, this guy actually has something cool over here. Oh, sure. I don't hate these anymore. Oh, yeah. you're right, whatever. Um, <laughs> I've got my... I've got two questions. <laughs> okay. Go on. I've got my 67 F100 that's slammed that will probably never get done. That... <laughs> That has been stillborn for five years, and and you did you, you, you paid it how long ago? Yeah, yeah, five, five or six years it's ago. It's been at least that. Yeah, yeah. we basically the, uh, the truck and died right around that time, and yeah. I took that project with it. Unfortunately, um, 
So, yeah, so I, I love that, like, cruising. I live in Huntington Beach, California. I love cruising PCH. Yeah. You know, I love having that. I also have a 41 Ford GPW, which yeah. is a Willys Willis flat fender Jeep with a Buick Odd Fire in it. I actually have one of those shirts that has the firing order, except it's the Odd Fire firing order. So all the guys with LSs have the same shirt look at me, and they're like, you know, like, <laughs> why are there two dashes, why and why it? are there only six numbers, and why are they jumbled like that? I um, love it. And so that thing's awesome because the vintage stuff is just cool. But... Um, I was able, right, right before I found out I was getting laid off, I, I uh, bought a Wrangler 392. And, I mean, that thing kind of just does everything. It's it's all the off-roading that so I want to So you have do. your dream vehicle. I think I have it. Oh, wow, yeah. that's great. I think there's other stuff I that love you, it. I think about. Like some of the JDM cars that are coming up in value now, like a Honda S2000. Cool. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, or a, you know, the... Uh, 2JZ, Twin Turbo Supra, like those things that we missed out on, a Ram SRT10, yeah. manual, regular cab, Viper truck, like things like that. But the Jeep really does everything because I can go off-road, I can still drive it. I can I'll, drive I'll it give out. it to you because it's a V8. It is a V8, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, but it's you've rad. mentioned vehicles that, yeah. that it's about the driving experience yeah, of them. Totally. I mean, and to me, like a V8 is part of that. Like it really the, is. The biggest you know, knock on like, the Wrangler is it's automatic. And I swear, oh, I swear. Yeah. God is my witness. <laughs> I have never bought myself an automatic transmission vehicle ever in my wow. life. And I bought my wife. So her this car. is the first. This is the very first one. That's only because they didn't offer a manual. My Wrangler, my 20 Wrangler, and then my uh, 12 Wrangler before that, and my Honda Civic Si, my Ranger, all the things I used to have, all were manuals. And so I struggle. I still jump into the 392 and, and hit the floorboard with my left foot. <laughs> Like I still, I still do it. It's weird. Where's that clutch? I'm like, oh yeah, I don't have it here, right? Um, so it's it's kind of weird, uh, but yeah, I think I I think I probably have it, but you know, well, and it takes you everywhere. It takes so, me everywhere. So I mean, I it, that is one thing that I really do love about like off road vehicles yeah. is like you can go anywhere. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I'll drive a thousand miles to go wheeling five hundred yeah. miles and drive a thousand miles home, and it's totally. fine. And the three ninety two is cool because it's all wheel drive. So now yeah. all of a sudden, and it's really comfortable too. Yeah, and going to the snow and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I, you know. It's it's got the traction you You're need for that. You're not limited. No, yeah. it's it's awesome. So speaking of traction, okay, Cybertruck. Oh, <laughs> so and, and, oh, is that uh, what the uh, questions uh, uh, or are those the I questions stomping. into okay. those? Okay. Uh, oh wow. Okay. Wait, wait. How much longer are we going to be here with this question? It'll be a couple <laughs> minutes. <laughs> okay, I'll here, give <laughs> up my other. <laughs> no, I won't. Okay, okay. Here's, here's what I'll say. Okay. I'll say that uh, I don't hate EVs. Um, I think there's a place for them. I think that uh, if it's your third or second car and you go, only go 100 miles range from sure, your house, they're great. They're, they yeah. make last mile delivery, school buses, yeah. things like that. It's great. I don't like how people are pushing us into mm. that. I don't think it only. should be regulated into only. that. I think yeah. that consumers should have a choice. Sure. That being said, so just so you know, I'm not an EV homer, but I, I don't hate them either. Um, I was brought in early on Cybertruck, had a chance to see it with some people from Motor Trend. Um, and uh, there's a lot of things. Where's the truck part? Uh, it has a bed. Where? Well, it's behind the <laughs> angular thing. <Okay>. Um, <laughs> I felt that was important for everyone. Yeah. So everyone's so, asking, you know, Sean P. Holman. I, I, I drove a Rivian uh, cross country as part of a story we did on the Trans America Trail, and we my leg was um, um, Oklahoma th through U Moab, Utah. And so I really got a chance to experience the electric vehicle off-road and all that. Yes, there is range, range anxiety. That's real. Um, they're heavy. There's yeah, some efficiency course. issues. Yeah, you know, yeah. we, we, that could be a, its own podcast. But as far mm -hmm. as the Cybertruck goes, um, I don't hate it for what they're trying to do, and that's to be a disruptor, which is Tesla's yeah, disruptor. Right. Yeah, right. Um, I, I, I told them early on, like, it was too big. I know it got scaled down 20%, and I don't know. I have an NDA, so I don't know, like, how much I go in that. And also the material choice was originally something other than stainless steel, and I may have done something that I'll tell you off the uh, <laughs> off the air on that. So I've had okay. a little bit of of experience and history with the truck. Yeah, I know there's a lot of videos like, oh, it can't off road and things. Well, you also have a lot of people who aren't going from off road trucks to yes. a cyber truck. They're going from a, a Model Three yeah. into a cyber truck, yeah. so they don't really and know. They how don't to even know how yeah. to off road. So I'm going to have an uh, I'm going to have an opportunity in not too mm. long to be able to take one off road, Rad. and then I can kind of formulate my opinion. There are some really neat things you can do, like with the air suspension, pop yourself up out of mud, or with okay. the, like the Rivian had yeah. the tank turn that never came out. But what you can do is pop yourself out of mud ruts sideways, or things like that. But they also don't have that visceral feedback. So mm, that's uh, a big 50% yeah. throttle yeah. feels like 100% throttle. There's, sure, you know Hummer's done a good job of introducing some vibrations and sounds into the cabin, so Got that. It you have feedback as a driver because yep. you're very disconnected in an electric yeah, truck. Yeah, that makes sense, yeah. But I, I think it's interesting 
kudos to them for having something that is so polarizing one way or the other. Sure. There's a lot of cool things about it where I think if it looked different, people would be like, okay, I can live with that. Yeah. But it's, it's, I, I, it's Tesla being Tesla and, yeah. and you can love it. You can hate it. They don't really care if you love it or hate it. <laughs> yeah. And, and their, their fans don't care if you hate it. Or and it. and <laughs> I think too, love it or hate it. Somebody's still talking about it. Well, totally. you look right. at some of the yeah. companies like unplugged performance out of Hawthorne, yeah, yeah. right? Unplugged yeah. is tight with, with Tesla and they do yeah. a lot of, you know, Randy Pope's on the, the Pikes peak Tesla was done with unplugged and yeah. some of that stuff. And you think Randy's one of the best, you know, road drivers in the world and he's, he's done it in a Tesla. So companies like that have, they, they just launched a few weeks ago, a cyber truck line yeah. of aftermarket products called yeah. Invincible. They're, yeah, and they're so one flares of the, and things like yeah, that. Yeah, flares and there's, there's bumpers coming and yep, like all, yep, this, all yep. the stuff you'd have. Yeah. The reason yeah, I think Brendan, that's, our friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, yeah. So the, the the reason I think that's important to say is is whether you like the truck or not, the aftermarket is once again come to the rescue yeah. to make it even better or do something better or fit your lifestyle better. Yeah. And I'm never going to knock that. I think any vehicle that has some sort of a following to support an aftermarket is is worthwhile because it means that you can customize it and make make your own. Totally. Thing. And I mean, it's an extension of our personality. And so yes. be, everyone has Absolutely. a different personality, and that's part of it. And I'll so. drive anything. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like perfect. It to me to drive they'll do it. i'll do it i love it great so where can we get a hold of you sean it sounds like a couple places uh, yeah. but like let us your know. cell phone number or yeah, yeah. Let, let, let the audience know we'll all right uh sh at sean p holman on all of the socials and then also through the businesses at ovr mag uh at uh, use for adventure or at adv jeep is my jeep page uh and then yeah you can own and at truck show podcast as well so it's and you guys gotta listen to the truck show podcast well, i appreciate yeah. that yeah because yeah. Teresa's yeah. gonna be on it at some yeah. point yeah. so <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> and, we, and we have been before. So, yeah, it's yeah. great. We appreciate it. So, uh, well, thanks for having me on. Yeah, this, this is great. So I like what you guys are doing here. Thank and you. Uh, it's like totally legit. You got lights and you have this cool, like, set and stuff. <laughs> You're going to be so disappointed when you come to my shed in the backyard <laughs> later today and hang out. This isn't our space. So, yeah, you okay. know, we, right. really we cool have to come here to a cool place like yeah, this. We got so, really yeah. cool friends. Well, but thank you. Yeah. We appreciate yeah. you being ha on. So. Happy New Year. And, uh, uh, much increased uh, success for you guys. You guys Thank have been you. killing it. And Thank I love you. all the things you've done with Real Deal. And, awesome. I mean, and there's so much stuff that, and I think you're one of the people that's in my 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 orbit, I guess, or my sphere, right? That's as busy as I am. Where <laughs> I look and I'm like, what's Teresa doing now? And it's like, I mean, what I think- What circle is she I, I know. I mean, we're always off <laughs> yeah. and about doing stuff. Totally. And, and it's awesome. Totally. And uh, more, more of you driving your Corvette. Uh, I videos. Know. Those oh, are awesome. Yeah. It's good, huh? Okay. Yeah. Good. yeah. And we, we love doing this podcast because we get to share stories like yours, oh, you know, with gosh. everyone. So yes. it's really good. Well, I thank think you. that was great. So, yes. well, thanks for Sean P. Holman for being on today. We <laughs> oh appreciate it. Oh my gosh. I'm Fastlane Jane. And I'm Design Muse. And this was Sean P. Holman. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> thanks for watching High Octane Hustle.